Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Network. Today, we're taking a closer look at Fedora Linux 43, the newest release from the Fedora project. If you're curious about what's new, whether you should upgrade, and what's changed under the hood, this video is for you. So, let's break it down. Let's start with something a lot of you are wondering. Is upgrading complicated? Actually, no, not at all. If you already have Fedora installed, upgrading to Fedora 43 is almost as easy as running your normal software updates. Seriously, the whole process feels very similar. The only difference is that this update is a bit bigger, so you might have enough time to grab a coffee while it finishes. But that's about it. Fedora really makes upgrades smooth and painless. Now, if this is your first time trying Fedora, or if you want to start fresh, you have a lot of options. Fedora gives you different versions depending on what you need. Workstation, the standard desktop edition, KDE Plasma Desktop for people who love KDE, Server, Cloud, CoreOS, IoT for more advanced use cases, automatic desktops like Silver Blue, Keynote, Budgie, Cosmic and Sway, and many alternative desktop spins like Cinnamon, XFCE and more. Basically, no matter what type of Linux experience you want, Fedora has an edition built just for that. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and you want more Linux reviews, tips and distro breakdowns, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and you won't miss any of my future videos. And a huge thank you to all my channel members. Your support means a lot and it helps me keep improving the videos and the content I create. Thank you all so much! Fedora always ships with a huge amount of improvements, way too many to list in one video. That's why the Fedora team publishes full release notes for people who want every tiny detail. But in this video, we're going to focus on the changes that you will actually notice. If you install Fedora 43 from scratch, especially one of the Fedora spins, you'll see a new installer interface called the Anaconda Web UI. Fedora Workstation already has this in version 42, but now all the spins use it too. So what does this mean for you? The installer looks cleaner, it's easier to understand, it feels a bit more modern and is more consistent across Fedora editions. For new users, this is great, because it makes the first experience with Fedora much more beginner friendly. If you use GNOME, and that's a lot of Fedora users, this is the biggest change you'll notice. Starting with Fedora 43, GNOME no longer includes the old X11 session, it is now Wayland only. Here is the simple explanation. Wayland equals modern, secure, better performance. X11 equals very old technology from the 1980s, slowly being phased out. GNOME developers have been preparing for this for years. In GNOME 49, they even disabled X11 by default, and by GNOME 50, X11 support will be completely removed. So Fedora is basically ahead of the curve here. For most people, everything should just work, but older apps that depend on X11 may behave differently. Luckily, most popular apps already support Wayland today. Now, let's talk about the stuff you don't really see, but that's super important for Fedora's future and security. Fedora 43 is the first release to include RPM 6.0. But don't worry, nothing changes in how you install apps. You still use DNF or the software center exactly the same way. So what's the big deal? RPM 6.0 brings better security, support for signing packages with multiple keys, and the groundwork for future-proof protection against new types of cyber threats like future quantum computers attacks. You won't notice anything day to day, but Fedora just became more secure behind the scenes. Fedora is also improving something called Boot C, which is related to how bootable systems like CoreOS are built. Here is the simple version. Before Fedora 43, building a Fedora CoreOS image required special tools. Now you can build it using a basic Fedora Bootsy image, a simple container file, and Podman, 
This makes it easier for developers and companies to create custom CoreOS systems, either manually or through automated pipelines. If you use Fedora CoreOS, the automatic container-focused Fedora, this is a major change. Fedora 42 used both OS3 and OCI images. Fedora 43 removes OS3 updates completely. From now on, CoreOS updates come only as OCI container images. For everyday users, this doesn't change much, but for servers and cloud environments, updates are now more consistent and easier to automate. Fedora Linux 43 continues Fedora's tradition of being one of the most modern and innovative Linux distributions out there. If you're upgrading, the process is easy. If you're installing fresh, the new installer is more friendly than ever. And under the hood, Fedora is preparing for the future, with improved security, better update systems, and more modern technologies. If you're thinking about upgrading or trying Fedora for the first time, version 43 is honestly a great release to jump into. But what about you? Are you already running Fedora 43? I'd love to hear your experience so far, the good, the bad, or anything in between. Drop your thoughts in the comments and let's talk about it. If you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.